Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1 through 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. How about you, but I'm enjoying this weather. Praise God. Yeah, I don't know. No, not me. 2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 6. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart, and such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Father, we thank you now. We bless you in this place. We give God you praise. We give you honor and glory for your magnificence, God, for your glory, for your power, for your love, for your salvation, for your mercy, for your word. We bless you in this place now. And God, somebody here today is going to bless your name. Somebody here today is going to have the scales removed from their eyes that they might see, Lord God, that you are greater than words can even tell. But now we bless you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to draw a thought from Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Uh, it's good to see our dear lifelong friend and fellow minister in the gospel, Elder Willie Miller. You all give him a hand in service with us today. Amen. He has some roots in Calvary. Praise God. Matthew 4 says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know, it's really amazing to see and to hear, observe, and to know all of the unstable things that are going on in society today, especially in a country called America. Uh, this is a time unlike probably most of us have never seen before. America has had its challenges. America has had its issues. America has had its, I would say, internal wars. But you've never seen so much divisiveness and so much hatred as you see today. All of these things, if you're not careful, will draw you in with the same mindset that some of these people have who promote this and who support this type of attitude and this type of behavior. You have to guard your spirit. 
You have to guard your mind, the Bible tells you. Why? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, because it's very easy to teeter and totter on the verge of depression. And it has nothing to do with what's happening in your life personally. It just has everything to do with what you have allowed to enter into your mind and what you spend most of your time entertaining. You have to really guard your, your mind. You have to really guard your heart. Uh, you have to realize that uh, the news media and those who report the news, uh, they get paid, they get ratings to sensationalize stuff and to present something to you in a way that can arouse your curiosity. You have to really watch that. Praise God. Now, you can say, well, that doesn't bother me. I differ with you. I'm here to tell you that what goes in your ears and what comes in your eyes can bother you, praise God. You have to guard yourself. But with all of this instability, with all of this uncertainty and all of the negativity, everything that you hear and feel and see that is not wholesome, it doesn't create a a sense of joy or happiness in your life. One thing that you better make sure that through all of the fog and through all, amen, of the clouds and all of what is being promoted, the propaganda, you got to make sure that you know where God is and you got to make sure that you know who he is and you know who you are to God, praise God. So with all of these things going on here, and this is something that I feel personally is a big issue for a man today, and that is what Jesus said in verse 4 here. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Our real issue here is not a lack on God's part. It's not a lack of God hearing us. It's not a lack of God blessing us and God, amen, wanting to bring us into large places and great experiences and Holy Ghost joy. Our problem is, is that man is trying to live by bread alone. That's the real issue. Man is trying to live by bread alone which is a direct contradiction against the word of God. Uh, there are people that believe if they have wealth, if they have money, if they have shelter, if they have food, they believe that that's all that they need to have. But these times are testing even the best of them. Those who have all of that are finding themselves in dilemmas and uncertainties. I read an article, I believe it was yesterday, that uh, the gentleman who invented uh, this low-calorie sugar, a billionaire, went to his fifth-floor, amen, high-rise apartment and opened the window and jumped off right in the middle of the city of New York, praise God, and killed himself. Uh, you and I would say, if we had what he had, what else could he want, praise God? If you don't have God, and if you don't know the one that, hey, that makes the difference, praise God, that whatever you have on this side, he's the one to balance it on the other side and, and keep you at a place that you're in harmony and you're in peace and you have his joy in your life, praise God. But Jesus said this. He said, man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And I know those of you who've been around here a while, you've heard me teach from this particular scripture, praise God, amen. And there were times we spent a lot of amount of time talking about this and talking about the word proceedeth and what it means and amen, praise God. And we know that our approach to this, amen, formally, amen, had to do with hearing what God says to do next, not just hearing what he said once. But what is the next thing that God is saying? We, amen, come to realize is that this is how a lot of people miss coming to fulfill the will of God and the purpose of God for their lives. Why? Because we need God to tell us what to do next. 
We need to hear what is he saying now. For the scripture declares that he that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Not what the Spirit said, but what is the Spirit saying? Now, I want to tell you this, that I believe that every day God is talking to us. I believe for every situation that we, amen, experience and that we're in the midst of, I believe God has a comforting word. I believe God has a directive for his people of how we should approach and what should be our thought process and our behavior in the midst of all of these uncertainties. Praise God. I believe he's speaking to us. I believe he's talking to us. Praise God. I just don't believe we're listening. I believe that we're allowing someone else to occupy that space and that time, amen, and that opportunity where God wants to speak, that we are giving our ears to other people and other stuff, praise God. But I want to tell you something, God is not going to shout at you. He's not going to scream at you. He's going to do like he did the prophet. He's going to speak in a still, small voice to you, praise God, amen. And if he doesn't speak, he can lead your heart. He can lead your mind. He can direct your spirit, praise God. And you know it's him, praise God. I want to tell you something. He can't come and you not know that it's him. Because you know the difference in what's of you and what's of him, praise God. Somebody say, how do I know the voice of God? I want to tell you something. If you got any spiritual bearings about yourself, you know when he's talking. You know why? Because your skin will try to crawl off your body. Amen. Your mind would try to comprehend what he's saying to you at that time. And you realize that I can't comprehend this. And so the only thing you can do in response to him speaking is to open your mouth and begin to utter praise and utter honor unto him. Praise God. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever had that moment? Amen. The words tried to come out and they couldn't come out. Praise God. You know that's a form of prayer. Amen. Praise God that you want to talk but you can't talk and all you can do is moan and groan in the spirit why because God got your abilities locked down baby he has amen your natural instincts locked down and he wants you to simply concentrate and focus on the moment that he's talking to you praise God amen if I were you today I wouldn't walk out of here unless I'm absolutely persuaded that no matter what the circumstances are in my life that God has a solution he has an answer he has a word for my situation come on somebody and clap your hands and thank him for it right now I believe he's just that personal I believe he's just that knowledgeable I believe he's just that aware of everything that concerns us and if you don't believe that you ought to read the word of God that tells you amen that God knows amen everything that the bird needs amen he knows what the grass needs that grows up today and is cut down tomorrow and then he turns around and asks you the question are you not much better than a sparrow are you not much better than a, a bird if I take care of the bird and feed it every day what more so about you Oh, my God, I hear praise God. Amen. Amen. Listen, I don't want you to get excited over a message. I want you to experience a mind change, a mind shift. I want you to experience a different way of thinking and a different way of operating in God. Wherein that, amen, everything don't have to be just right oh, for you to know that he's good. Praise God. But even when there's some negative stuff transpiring, even when there's some support, some reports uh, that you didn't want to get, praise God, that you know uh, that God is still in this thing with me, praise God, that he has not left me to endure this without him having something to say about it. Clap your hands and give God praise. I'm talking about the proceeds of God. Uh, if you really think about the word proceeds, uh, you can go back to thinking and realizing that sometimes when there's an agency or person who is collecting money for a particular cause, and they'll tell you that the proceeds will go toward this or for that, 
amen, praise God, or they're collecting it for this or that. Oh, I want you to know something that when God speak, proceeds coming out of his mouth. Oh, what do you mean? What you need is coming out of his mouth. Amen. The strength you need is going to come out of God's mouth concerning you. Oh, I know I got some witnesses in here oh, that can testify that they have been at times where there was nothing naturally, nothing physically, nothing financially that they could do about this situation. But God spoke. And when God speaks, amen, hell has to listen. I say when God speaks, amen, demonic oppression has to dissipate. When God speaks, troubled minds have to find peace. Praise God. When God speaks, amen, depressed spirits have to find joy. When God speaks, I'm talking about when God speaks, amen, praise God to your heart. Oh, praise God. I don't care how long and how many of your family members have had dysfunction and issues. When God speaks to you, he brings a change in your life. I say he brings a status in your life that a college education can't bring. Amen. That no famous people cannot bring. When God speaks, praise God. Amen. The first Adam's temptations took place in a garden. Praise God. Uh, this is where he failed and was cast out the cause of his fall. Satan's conversation with the first Adam uh, was identical with his conversation with the last Adam, which is Christ. If you go and read in Genesis, the dialogue that Satan had with Adam and Eve, and you look at Matthew chapter 4, the dialogue he had with Jesus, oh, there are very strong similarities to his approach to Adam and his approach to Christ. But see, it had to be this way. Why? Because Jesus had to be familiar with everything that a human being would feel and experience. He had to have the same level of temptation or greater than what Adam had. I don't read where Adam had fasted 40 days and 40 nights and the devil came to him. But Jesus topped that. Amen. He came, the Bible says he was led in the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. Uh, the very reason that Jesus was in the place that he was in because God led him there. Amen. God set up an encounter between, between Christ and the devil. It was all in the plan and in the will of God. Uh, so you have to understand, praise God, that God had your victory. And he had my victory in mind. And he knew there was only one, amen, that could secure the victory for us. I wish I had a shadow in him. I wish I had a praise in him. Amen. That God is setting something up for your benefit. Praise God. He's setting something up to, uh, for your victory. Amen. Praise God. I don't care how low you've been. I don't care what you've done in your life that you don't want nobody to know about. I don't need to know it. All I want you to know is what he did for you in spite of. Amen. Praise God. In spite of what you did. In spite of what you're guilty of. I want you to know what he did for you. Amen. How he delivered you. How he saved you. How, amen, he set you free. Oh, praise God. It's not enough just to shout, amen, but you ought to have a mind that's free that you can praise him. You ought to have a mind that you don't care how nobody look at you, that you got a mind that you're going to bless the Lord. You should care what they think of you. If they say every Sunday, she's always getting up, walking in a circle. Oh, baby, if you only knew that the circle now is in my feet, it used to be in my head. But God has set 
me free. I'm free to praise him. I'm free to worship him. I'm free to bless him. I'm free to honor him. Yes, I'm going to clap my hands. Yes, I'm going to do my dance. Yes, I'm going to open my mouth. And I'm going to shout with a voice like an angel shouts and give glory to my God. Why? Because it was his proceeds that set me free. It was his proceeds that delivered me. It was his proceeds that stabilized me. It was his proceeds that gave me the victory over my enemies. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be, but I can bless him, praise him, and thank him. Somebody clap your hands and tell him thank you. You ought to thank him like you haven't thanked him in a long time. Ah, somebody here ought to give him some glory. It was what proceeded out of his mouth that kept you safe, that held you fast, that kept you with life, health, and strength. It was what came out of his mouth that he told you he loved you. Amen. When you felt all alone, it was his proceeds that, amen, gave you victory. When you couldn't find it on your own, it was his proceeds. Hallelujah. People told you that in order to have a certain standard of living and a certain level of success, that you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do this and do that. Oh, but God said that's man's plan. He said, I got a plan for you that I can get you there faster than anybody can. I can get you there with less stress than you can. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Accommodate yourself. I can get you there if you just trust me. If you just obey me. If you serve me. I'll do things in your life that your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, neither have it in your heart, the thing that God has prepared for them that love him. But he'll reveal it to you by your spirit. He'll take shame off of you and put glory on you. Amen. What everybody thinks they know about you, he'll call them to forget that you were ever like what they said you were. And God will put power and glory in your life and cause you to be a blessing. See, some of you know how King David felt, and this was, I'm not talking about after he became king. I'm talking about the process that led up to him being king, uh, being the youngest of his father's children. And, and God tells the prophet Samuel, go down to Jesse's house, and amen, there you're going to anoint me a king for Israel. And Amen. And Samuel goes down there and call Amen seven sons uh, of Jesse. Uh, tell them to come on down here to the house. Uh, I'm going to anoint a king out of this house. And Amen. They forgot about little old David. Uh, why? Because David, Amen. He wasn't in the mix like the rest of them. Uh, uh, he didn't get the recognition that the rest of them got. He got the menial task. He got the task that the older brothers didn't want to do. They gave it to David. And David found out that a good attitude uh, is the best thing that you can have going in your life. And David out there caring for the sheep. And while they're probably hanging around the house, amen, having a good time, David is out in the pasture. He's out there writing songs about how good God is. Why? Because David knew God. Unlike his brothers knew him. Unlike his daddy knew him. Why? 
Why? Because God came and visited Dave. Why? Because God heard David's praise while he was out there taking care of the stinking sheep. But he was out there blessing God and praising God and getting visions and dreams of the power of God. I'm talking to somebody here. I'm trying to tell somebody here that, that as much as you have been walked over and passed over, oh, you better always keep your praise in your repertoire. You better always keep your praise, amen, on your mind. No matter how low it looks, no matter how bad you feel, you better keep your praise. Keep your praise. Why? It's necessary. Why? Because after a while, amen, not long from now, the very praise, the very thing that you're bragging on God about, God is going to manifest himself to you according to your praise, according to your boasting in the Lord. God will become just what you said that he is in your life. So if you're broke, you better praise him for being a provider. Amen. If you're sick, you better praise him for being a healer. If you're confused, you better praise him for being a mind regulator. If you're in the dumps, you better praise him for giving you hinds feet that you can scale. Amen. Praise God. Whatever it is, you better give him praise. Why? Because one day, God is going to knock on your door and say, I heard what you said about that. I heard how you praise me. I heard how you bless me. I come to let manifest and I come to release the blessing that you claim that I am. I come to release it in your life. Somebody bless him now. Clap your hands one more time and bless him. The doors that you need opened. All God has to do is say, let the way be made for you. You're finding people coming to your aid and coming to your assistance that you can't even fathom how are they being so supportive and being so caring at a time when you need it most. God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Thank you, Jesus. I thank him for those of you that God has lifted you out of depression. Lifted you out of the sting of your past. And lifted you out of the bottomless pit. <laughs> Let me say this and then I'm going to quit. Some of you heard me say this before. think that the bottomless pit is this physical place that's large and full of fire and brimstone. We think that that's the bottomless pit. There are some people that goes under the ban of Christian who is in the bottomless pit every day. Oh, what do you mean? The bottomless pit is the things, they're the things in your life that you regret, that causes you the most pain, that causes you the most conflict and confusion in your mind. And every time look like something favorable is happening in your life, here's the bottomless pit that reminds you of your failures, remind you of the rejection and the maltreatment and the misunderstanding and the falsehoods and the negativity and the pain and the rejections 
that you've experienced in your life. You want to do different. You want to be different. But the bottomless pit won't let you escape. But there's a key. There's a key. It's a kingdom key. That closes the bottomless pit in your life. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said there's a kingdom key that closes the bottomless pit in your life. You just keep falling. You just keep falling. Can't get it out your mind. How somebody treated you. How you gave your best. You gave your all. You did everything that is possible to help somebody and they turned their back on you. And you just keep falling. Lord, y'all pray. Paul said this. Paul said, we don't need a letter from you to commend us. He said, because I don't need you always telling me how great I am, how sweet I am, how wonderful I am. But Paul was telling the Corinthians, I don't need that. He said, there are those who need you to do that for them. He said, but we don't need you to do that for us. He said, you know why? Because God is my supply. God is my sufficiency. My expectation is from the Lord. My expectations are not from people. My expectations are from the Lord. Listen. Just give me a minute. Listen. This is what probably one of the most common statements that people make to me if they see me out somewhere. I can remember we was having a picnic and I was in Sam shopping for some of this stuff and this gentleman came to me. He says, that's right, all them people you got over there, you got to do this. I said, no, I don't have to do it. I want to do it. Listen, that don't make me anybody important because there are people who do things either for me or to keep me from doing it. That won't raise my level of importance and significance based on that. And then it was, so you, you wash your own car? I'm the only one driving. You know what I know what they're saying? They know pastors that got people wash their cars, cut their yard clean their house and do all of this stuff and what have you. And I know that. How is it I got 20 members and I got 10 bodyguards? I got 10 bodyguards. The point I'm making here is this. Is that your sufficiency should be from the Lord. Stand. Stand. God has his way. God can speak and change everything about your life. Mm-hmm. He can speak and heal you right now. He can deliver you right now. Hallelujah. He can meet every need you have right now. Father, now we bless you in this place. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We bless you now. Hallelujah. Jesus, our lives are in your hands. 
You can mold us. You can shape us. You can speak to us. You can make us just what you want us to be. But that we say thank you. Thank you that we're the clay and you're the potter. And that you can make us a vessel of glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help your people now. We pray for those who are absent because of sickness and other circumstances. We pray for them. We pray for all the saints of God and people of God everywhere. God, not just here locally, but internationally around this world. We pray. We pray for this nation. We pray, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for your people. Give you thanks in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and bless him once more.